interviews with business owners that puts them in front of a global audience. And in behind those shows is a whole range of things, from digital magazines, to social media, to blogging, to email, to lead generation, just a whole range of things. everyone and welcome back to the Everyday Business Show. I'm your host Tony Lontis and as always we have an amazing guest to talk to today but just a reminder if you're watching this live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter or the Everyday Women's Network please know that anything we talk about in the show today you will find links in the notes attached to this interview. If you've missed any previous shows and you want to catch up with the amazing uh, people we talk to each and every week, don't forget that you can watch all the previous shows on YouTube or Everyday Women's Network. A reminder to you that we've just removed subscription from Everyday Women's Network so that anyone across the planet is able to jump on, jump in and look at the content on Everyday Women's Network. Now, each and every week, we do an important acknowledgement to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of Australia. And it goes a little bit like this. Today, I want to respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. I want to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here listening and watching today. We thank you for your wonderful contribution to Australia's cultural identity. Now, this week, we're talking to the gorgeous Jane Vandermeer, and she is a styling guru. And today, we want to talk about showing up as your authentic self. But before we do that, here's what you need to know about Jane. Jane is a multi-award winning, highly intuitive, gentle thought leader. She is a best-selling author, multi-award winning trainer, speaker, and loves sharing her knowledge. She has always had a love of high fashion. You could say it's in her blood. As a creative an entrepreneurial thinker, she has a 30-year career in the fashion industry, including such elements as designer, tailor, pattern maker, quality controller, buyer, wholesaler, retailer, lecturer, business owner, and creator. She's created and built a number of award-winning businesses within the fashion and creative industries, starting with a couture design business, styling and creating wardrobes for beautiful women across the planet. Jane is an innovative personal stylist who elevates women in business with purpose under her brand, Finesse Your Style. Her holistic, soulful personal styling is an a beautiful ability to truly listen to her clients and gain their perspective in a non-judgmental way, gently guiding them to revised, updated and truly authentic aesthetic of their style. She helps female founders, speakers, coaches and consultants feel like they can take on the world, share their message and share their light. Jane has an innate ability to connect with her clients often when they can't always articulate their own needs. Jane is also um, a, a intuitive whisperer, a multi-award winning um, maker of artisan parfum oils and natural deodorants, an ethical luxury for the conscious consumer. She's an international award-winning business owner and has featured in many places, including UK Vogue. Please welcome to the show the amazing Jane Vandermeer. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Tony. Thank you so much. What an introduction, my goodness. That's <laughs> so kind of you. <laughs> Always uh, a funny thing hearing yourself spoken about in such a way, so thank you. Oh, look, it's my pleasure to get 
to uh, chat with you as a friend and a co-creator and a wonderful, amazing woman. Um, I just wanted to highlight one of the things that you say, and it's a mo motivational quote of your own, and it goes like this. It's my belief when you understand yourself more, you sit within yourself firmly. It's then you can command the room with the extra level of innate confidence True confidence and empowerment comes with truly knowing and understanding yourselves. And so you help female speakers, coaches, and consultants feel like they can take on the world and share their message. Um, this quote is very special because it's your very own. What does it mean to you, Jane? Yeah, great question. I realised a long time ago that... I could approach styling in a different way. And, yeah. And I suppose I janified what I learned. You know, I, I've done a lot of education and keep learning. And mm. then I put my skills or, or reframe it. So what I worked out a, a long, long time ago was I could I could take women, you know, shopping or, or teach them, you know, this will work on you um, because, and that's lovely and it impacts them and makes a real difference. But actually what I truly believe is when I teach women and tell them the why and why your body is the way it is, why your colourings are the way it, they are, and this is how to make the very most of your unique, beautiful set of features and assets that you have. And so to have, when you understand that, then that, to me, that's true empowerment for women. It's oh, actually, definitely. Yeah, because I'm giving you the tools. And mm. then rather than the reverse of making you reliant on me and therefore every season I might do this, that and the other with you, which would probably give me long-term um, clients from a different perspective, but actually my core belief is uh, truly about giving women tools to fly and flourish and then, you know, the ripple effect when women feel good about themselves and confident about themselves is I was just going to say, Jane, there's something and I relate this a little bit to age as well because um, I feel that age is a, is a beautiful thing for women. And I embrace aging because I think with it comes uh, a confidence and a wisdom that you never had or, or I wish I had in my 20s. But when you combine that with intuitive styling and styling services such as you provide, it it helps a woman step into a different level of empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I'm just... From your perspective, Jane, and you've been in the fashion industry since you were 16, so you have a wealth of your own fashion wisdom. Yeah. Can you tell the audience some of the transformational um, changes that you've seen happen yeah. to women after yeah. working with you in the styling space? So I, I realised a long time ago that what... What I needed to do, a solution, I want to be part of the solution. And so how I do that is I work with women over a longer period of time. Mm. My signature course goes for five months, which sounds like a lot, but there is a lot to learn. Yeah, there and is. So an example is beautiful lady who's when she started and, and you know it's, it's very personal and it's a very safe space and I create a non-judgmental space it's one-on-one -on -one. and at the start I remember this beautiful lady so she was early 60s when she came to me mm. and she she was in head to toe sort of beige mm. hair up a lot of regrowth no makeup but what she was doing is she was she would barely look me in the eye. She was quite shy. Mm -hmm. And she on we're online. I only actually work online now. <clears throat> but she would 
she was taking up the most little amount of space online oh, in this sort of corner and, and like the screen was like this and it was like I was like trying to get a butterfly to land on my hand like it was a really I knew and I'm very gentle but I knew she she needed gentleness and um support to open up and you know because it's very personal it's about our bodies mm. by the end of our time together not only like it was this complete metamorphosis she was taking up space and owning her space just mm -hmm. even on the screen yeah she had bought so I I guide women and I give yes. you the tools mm -hmm. but I do say at the start I would highly encourage you not to buy anything for at least the first two months. Understand yeah. how the foundations yeah. work. Yeah. And then at a certain point, which is different for everyone, the penny drops and the women are right and they fly. And so at a certain point she was buying her own things. Now, mm -hmm. this was a lady who, oh, look, that thing of just staying really safe and staying with what we know because we don't know, you know, and and her children had grown up and she she just didn't know who she was anymore. Mm -hmm. So towards the end, she's in this really pretty dress and she's got the jacket on that I helped her find and her hair looks glorious. She still, I don't think had, she might have only just had a bit of lippy on, but I've got her in all the right things she popped on jewelry and she doesn't normally wear jewelry and she said Jane I've got these business ideas I'm going to do this and this and this and this and she was this bubbly effervescent woman who had lit up the screen but she did it in a way that was true to who she is yes. true to her personality true to her skills and it was in a grounded way not in a flighty all over mm -hmm. the place in a way and I was sort of having an out-of-body experience looking at her thinking, this is night and day from where we started. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why I do what I do. That transformation, and it's different for everybody. Like she is not someone who is, has aspirations to end up on stage. That's not her story. It's, from my perspective, tailoring what your goals are and to take you to where you want to go. But the most important bit is drawing out who she is inside, you know. And for some of us, if we've been in situations that have chipped away at our self-worth, oh, yeah. and I often talk about, you know, it's not just one mean comment that some girl said to you once or your best friend or some boy, you know, you liked or like it's not or a family member. It's yeah. not one comment but it's it's the compounding effect of, of all of them of all of it and then that feeds that part of you that you believe about yourself so as we get a bit older we then have this idea that our bottom is too big or our tummy is too big or our knees are wobbly or you know whatever the thing is so unwinding that takes time and then eventually you don't care about that. Your knees and all your bottom or your tummy is still exactly the same, but I show you how to work to your features. Wait and see those things changes. And, and this is your gift, isn't it, Jane? Yeah, I suppose it is, yes. <laughs> the audience, I'm telling you, this is Jane. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt, don't, Jane, this is Jane's gift, her intuit intuitive yeah. knowing. Yep. combined with a fashion experience and yep. wisdom this is what makes a difference in the way that Jane styles women yeah particularly yeah. um uh, any age group but for older women it it, wow. it often has a powerful um mm -hmm. change within their lives um yeah. I wanted to talk we talked briefly before we started the interview audience about um, the way that women do business. And for Jane and I, it's, it's a very timely conversation. 
and we talked briefly about understanding the difference between the male energy of business and the feminine energy of business. Jane, I'd love you to share your thoughts with the audience around this and how it relates to how it intertwines with the styling as yeah. well. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Years ago, if we had have had that this conversation, yeah. I would have, I suppose not truly understood it, let alone live, lived that. Now it is infused with everything I do. So how I describe that is so I, I have, um, you know, I've had a pretty cool career. I've been a designer. I had a, a business, a couture business for a long time. I was also a buyer. So I travelled the world for about 11 years, um, which was a dream, and I loved it. My, you know, it was a lot, but I loved it. But, you know, it's very um, meeting targets and it's very um, action-driven. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot at stake and 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 it's more like traditional business and traditional business thinking. Mm. Anyway, I got really sick a few years ago and and I knew actually every single thing, it took a lot to make me stop. So a quick mm -hmm. overview is I had two very serious cancer scares in different areas. I had continual migraines. I couldn't move my neck much more than that for about a year with the migraines and the muscles. I had severe adrenal fatigue from being fight or fight for sort of 20 years. And then my back, I had this slip disc in my back. Oh, no. I couldn't walk, actually. It was so bad. I, I was just flat on the ground. And I remember thinking... And you'd think one of those things would be enough to slow you down, but you just keep pushing through. And I remember being flat on my back thinking, I think I've got to cancel today's appointments. Mm. <laughs> I'll just move them to tomorrow. And, of course, it's not about that. Of course it's not because I couldn't walk for a week. And for a minute you think, what if I can never walk again? Mm. Right. Okay. And so everything is off the table, everything. And it actually, at the time, you know, it seems like the end of the earth. Yeah. But it was the best thing that happened to me. It gave me the opportunity to review things and think differently. So if I fast forward a little bit, how I then re um, sort of branded Finesse Your Style from a different perspective, even though I've styled women on and off oh, since I was oh, 16. Yes. But I, I knew it was I needed to approach it in a different way and I sort of fought it a fair... I, As it, we do. Because I was really nervous about oh. approaching it in a different way. So how I approach business now is a more balanced masculine and feminine perspective. Mm. So... But it's taken me a lot to unlearn that behaviour. You know, we had Correct. five odd years and I kept defaulting into doing all the time, filling up every second of my day mm -hmm. and when it's a bit quiet or this business is slow, then, oh, you better do something. Yes. Because that's the way we've been. That's the way we've been. Business is slow. You must do something. You must go out and da-da-da-da-da-da. Which is is fine, but for a woman, our essence mm. requires mm. inks and flows. Absolutely. And, essence. and sometimes, no, not sometimes, all the time, mm. it's about checking in with that and doing less to create. Actually, <laughs> yes. You know? To try and it to sounds understand. so simple. It sounds so simple. It's a very, very, we were just, one of the things we mentioned before we jumped on is, is about having faith, A, number one, in yourself, but also having faith to jump and give things a go when you know there is no net. Mm -hmm. A traditional mm -hmm. business, we would do all the research and then we would only do something on a really calculated. Correct. 
Yes. Actually, these days I do exactly the reverse. Mm-hmm. I, I don't do everything blindly, but I, I trust my instinct. Yeah. And if I feel like I think this is the way forward, mm-hmm. I don't know how on earth that's all going to happen. I just trust it anyway. And you know what? I'm usually rewarded, usually rewarded for my bravery. Mm-hmm. And so it's quite a different way. And it's yeah. it's been okay with being a uncomfortable and be not having all the answers all the time yes. business is we need to know all the answers and have it really organized whereas and, and sales should be predictable and um yeah. we should meet this level of yep. uh, i'm hesitant to use the word kpi but that's I my know, but it's that's it basically yeah yeah need to meet yeah. this kpi well actually what would it look like if we did things differently? What would it look like really? if in uh, if in March and April, that's this, and you know this in your business, so March and April, they're the slow period in, in your business. What if you actually took a break, slowed mm-hmm. things down and reassessed things every March and April, mm-hmm. knowing that May, June, July, August, they're going to be bumpers, mm-hmm. a different way of okay. looking at it. And mm. at, but it's not it's it's easily said it's more difficult oh, it's super to, hard it's super hard if you're conditioned to I feel every that, second yeah that, and I've I've been um, talking a little bit about this late lately is the patriarchy of business mm. um no longer serves us I don't believe. No. And that the words that we use in traditional business, the, the the energy of traditional business, I actually think that there is a better way, particularly for women, to yeah. look and think about business. Yeah. And I think too, with what we're saying, it's not just a case, like if that's a new concept for you, it's not just a case of sitting there meditating hoping something happens it's not that Correct. it's not it, that no it I mean that is part of my daily practice every day yeah. it is also when things opportunities happen and um it is taking inspired action when required so it is just more balanced so sometimes it is inspired I felt like that um on Monday and isn't it Jane sometimes it's inspired inaction it is it is and I think that's the whole point of what we're talking about of the balance of the you know the masculine energy is the do go 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 go. yeah Yeah. and there are days when we need that and my Monday this week was that I had this enormous list and Mm -hmm. I I was on a roll and it really flowed and action happened and then the next day I was at an event in real life and that's what was required that day. And I suppose a bit more feminine networking and in-person and communication. And then the old Jane would have come back and then gone back into work. Whereas yes. I looked at it and I thought, no, I think I want to stay in this space actually and digest all this and think about the connections, think about the lovely conversations and stay in that. So it's it's a bit more of a balanced I agree. Yeah, slightly more fluid. Mm -hmm. And having said that, like my diary is still pretty structured, but within that I'm not so overbooked that there's not pockets of of breathing. Um, And and that's absolutely, Jane, I have to agree that um, in 2023, the beginning of the year, one of my actions was to block out time in my calendar. Yep. So that I had breathing space Absolutely. and to decide that working 16 hour days is not best for me and it doesn't work. And I am much better with space and time and downtime, reflective time. And then there's that trust that you spoke about earlier, that trust and understanding that if you're doing that, then the rest flows to you versus you having to constantly chase. And yes, there's some yes, there's some things that you do, like you spoke about networking. 
But I believe, and that's a great, that's great words of wisdom, Jane, those big networking events that, um, that tend to drain my energy. And I too would come back and go, I've got to get all those names down and connect with them. I'm like, now I'm going, no, um, I'm going to do this when my next action taking day is, and it will all float more easily and more quickly. I need to reflect today. I need to think about those connections. I need to think about those conversations because there's always, I always feel that we're drawn or connected to the people that, that we need to be at the right time. And so definitely there, I don't believe that there are times when we're not connected with the people that we need to be connected with. And so me being connected to you and having this interview today and discussing these concepts, that's for a reason. There's Absolutely. someone in the audience that Absolutely. is struggling with a certain part of life or business and they're like, oh, yeah, I actually want to live life more like that versus that. And I think, you know, the word authentic is mm-hmm. it, it's thrown around a lot at the moment and I haven't come up with a new word that means the same thing to use instead So we'll use the word authentic. But one of the reasons why I really like that word, so I weave and teach you about who you truly are in an authentic way. And then you show, in turn, it helps you show up in an authentic way. So we just said a few minutes knowing that I'm being interviewed today. One decision I make with every time I'm interviewed is the buffer, I call it the buffer of Jane. The buffer of Jane is rock solid. So, So that when I'm on screen, I'm grounded and I am authentically Jane and I say what is... um, needed to be said Mm. but I'm not rushing like a crazy crazy woman where my diary is so overbooked that I'm I'm sort of all over the shop and not grounded I I want to make sure that I am truly authentically present here and the most Jane that I can be absolutely and that's also in respect to you and your time it's it's a twofold thing yeah and that's a big change. That's one little change, but that's a big change from and it is a, my diary. It, and it does take some practice, though, oh, doesn't yes. it, Jane? Because yeah. I know when I'm not consciously conscious of it, my calendar will become more and more full, and I'll go, "Oh, okay, let's mm-hmm. let's get back into mm-hmm. where we should be with those buffers that yeah. ensure." that I show up in a way that's respectful of everyone's time, that we can have authentic conversations because the importance of authenticity is about growth for humanity. If we keep having authentic conversations, that causes more of humanity to pause and go, oh, okay, so maybe there's a different way, which in turn has a greater, wider impact, doesn't it? And I think in this time of of life that we're in mm-hmm. we're in information overload and we have oh. been for a little while so I think and my word of the year this year and last year is discernment mm-hmm. and I, I think this ties in with what we're talking about is it is making conscious decisions of being very discerning with mm-hmm. our time and our energy so stepping up saying do I need to read that email probably not Do I need to see, read that article? Do I need to look at socials right now? You know, I think we're so used to filling our time, but actually being discerning and and sitting within the quiet, creating buffers, because it's all draining our energy. And then we wonder why we're exhausted. (laughs) That's one big reason why we're exhausted. Exactly. And there is technical overload. We are there is. With 
with all sorts of things all the time. Never has there been an age where we've felt so impacted by technology, be that social media, be that TV news, emails, whatever it is. So I yeah. actually think that we have to go back to yeah. creating buffers and boundaries around our time and space. And I think because there is that culture that we're contactable every nanosecond and we're expecting we shouldn't be. Of course not. And we and we we then create that expectation that we'll answer mm. immediately. Mm. And so so for for me, i I after you know years of being so contactable by you know staff yeah. and whatever. And I remember one of the clinches was staff used to follow me into the toilet and talk to me in there and go, oh, just so I've got you on the mo at the moment. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Really? Like it just, yeah, just. Um, <laughs> oh, like, like kids, kids follow. Mom, yeah, I but not staff members. I'll just, Jane, you know that thing, blah, blah, blah. You know that client? I'm like, oh. Really? Right. So these days it's. It's it, it's been I, I suppose I walk the walk I lead how I like to be led, and how I like to be treated. And when I respond to your email, I give it consideration and answer in a grounded, considered way. Yes, it makes a difference, Jane. It does, it, and then they're. they're hmm. I used to think that the response and the response time was the key thing. I'm yeah. learning that that space and time often results in a better response and, so. yeah. and a more considered response. But it, it, it until you start doing it consistently, you have to be very conscious of those things. And yeah. awareness and consciousness go hand in hand in, in this discussion and thinking about it. So the purpose for Jane and I to talk is about for everyone to start thinking a little more, oh, maybe mm. my work day could look like this. Maybe my time could look like this. Mm. And mm. many people being in business, you're in business so that you have freedom, mm. time freedom, financial freedom, all of those things. So if you're too busy, so to speak, mm. that's, that's the opposite to what you want, isn't it? And I think that taking control of your own time mm -hmm. and therefore energy mm -hmm. is up to you. Oh, like really? really, that's within each of our power. Now, I know we all have different demands and all of that, and I get that. One little thing that comes to mind, one little hint is, and I read it years ago and then I ignored it because, you know, <laughs> Don't yeah. check your emails first thing in the morning or socials. Yes. Because our focus is going externally at what people need from us. And first thing in the morning, it needs to be centered within you, doesn't it? Exactly. Exactly. And if you can do it, then again, do your, do your projects first and then check your emails, maybe mid morning, maybe late morning. Mm. Because real, you know, uh, depending on what you do, if it's an emergency, you probably know that. But for most of us, it's probably not. That's the so other thing I, I keep saying to my staff, Jane, is that I come from a nursing background. If someone's having a heart attack, that's life and death. Business, for the most part, is never life and death. No. You never have to respond to that email as if it's life and death because it's not. No, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Just and I, you know, I come from an industry with dealing yes, with which is uh, lots of people and who don't. And... Oh, yeah, but they also a lot of you know creatives I've worked with over the years. They don't plan very well and leave things to the eleventh hour and all this kind of thing, and and so everything's a bit like this and. Yeah. and you know, it can't always be an emergency. It just can't. No, I can't. 
absolutely just can't absolutely. because they don't take it seriously so and, and then no wonder most many of us end up with adrenal fatigue because you're just too hyped up and yeah, ready yeah. To so like, I'm very very conscious about doing the exact reverse and mm-hmm. you know and I work in a pretty actually pretty very organized way and everything's mm-hmm. laid out and therefore try and not be too over committed obviously that some days that happens today and it does you know life can just be that way because it's life yeah I think if you can I've stepped out of functioning at that overbooked level yeah and that becomes your default absolutely that's not my default that's just an every now that's a big change yeah it is it is but having said that once you become aware of it you keep being dragged back or keep being reminded or prompted of what the alternative looks like Mm -hmm. and it does take a little bit of work Um, it does take a little bit of training if you're working in and around other people but once you get to that point you can actually not go back to that over busyness Mm -hmm. because I used to be just so busy and so booked that Mm -hmm. there was no flexibility within that Mm -hmm. calendar day I've discovered that by adding flexibility you get more done you have better conversations and you know it 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 informs a better day you're a relaxed more relaxed person which means you're more authentic and it just brings for a better life but it it was a struggle for me because again I come from that nursing and um, corporate world where things did tend to be life and death although even even thinking back to corporate um, health, where if a minister um, wanted an answer about something or other that was going on in the health sector and they always used to term things as if they were life and death, even then they weren't. They just wanted an answer straight away. Mm -hmm. And if we had have been able to flip that, then there would have been time and space to create a better solution, I think. Um, So... Yeah, I hope yeah. obviously it, it's tricky when you're in a corporate situation like that. Oh, definitely. There's like I, I, do, you know, I get that. Um, and I think we're... I, I hope we're moving away, though. I hope we're moving to a more... With, with the advent of um, working from home, which does give people such a, such a better balanced working life you know working from home is just the best thing um i think that those companies and corporations that embrace that and empower their staff to work um from home that's a great thing for the world um I think that if you can work in i tend to block my time mm. and block my you know so i work i block everything yes. now all notifications all everything yes. Yes. And look like a little, little, whatever in the tunnel. Hibernate, yes, in the yes. Yeah. I know. What you mean. And, and so, in four hours, I could do an eight-hour eight day. Yes, because I'm not sort of getting distracted and then losing, you know, losing your spot and all that kind of thing. And personally, that's how I prefer to work because if I can I do it in four hours and stay in the zone and. And that the ideas flow, the creativity flows, mm. and then mm. go for a walk in the sunshine. Mm. Let, let the next ideas flood in. Then I'm creating space to allow. Absolutely. Allow is a big part of, of I suppose, a more balanced view. Yeah. More balanced. I was reading an article recently where the, um, the guy was writing about um, following the Apple CEO um his schedule and this guy yeah. gets up at um quarter to four in the morning uh answers emails uh goes to the gym has breakfast and then goes to the office by 8 a.m and then he works until 7 p.m and then he's in bed by um quarter to nine and wow. the guy that was writing the article said i tried this um uh, i tried this routine for three days and he said mm-hmm. i had to stop 
this is just not workable. And so the conversational uh, piece in the article was around, is this necessary? Do we really have to work like this? And we've been led and shown by multiple leaders across the planet for multiple generations that this hard work ethic is what you have to do to get ahead. I, I would actually say that we need to change that, that that should not be the case. There should be balance brought back in. And, and I would throw, let, let's lead, lead by example with that. Yeah. You know, I've been interviewed a, a lot recently and they've that it's come up. Women have asked me what my routine is, my morning routine. <laughs> so mine I would throw in to lead, lead with this yes. is I am up between 5.30 and 6 most days. Mm-hmm. So it's Jane, uh, is, it, yeah. is that your natural waking no. time? Is that another? No, oh, it's a little bit earlier than my natural waking time. Yeah. 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 Now, I, now I do really I'm a, a reformed night owl really is what <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, but. No, um, no, because same, same. Yeah, yeah, like, you know. Um, but. So it's a little bit earlier, but I do a lot of calls with the US now. So I, I need, and I, so part of my daily practice is sitting cross legged and meditating or, or tuning, I call it tuning in yeah. for probably 20 minutes to half an hour. And that happens every day. And I've bought a book, and the mm. idea is, and I'm usually writing in the dark. Yeah. I can fill an A4 page with the ideas flooding in. And then, you know, so the day has started grounded, connected, and clear yes. in the bubble of Jane. Yeah. Yes, maybe there's some exercise after that. Mm. And then depending on what time the first call is and then the day starts now because I do that on pretty non-negotiable yeah I love it it is my most precious precious time of the day Mm -hmm. it's become that um and what I find is by lunchtime I've done a whole day even yeah. Oh, easily, easily. Yes. Yeah. And everything yeah. in the list, which is done because I'm setting the day up differently and I'm feeling inspired and grounded and the most Jane possible and connected because the answers are within, the answers are not externally. And the more I've done this more diligently, I've always done it, but I've stepped it up in the last few months, mm. it's, I'm then not confused about things I think in business when we're confused yeah we do nothing it's like analysis paralysis this has kept me clear mm-hmm. and then, so I just work on what's clear mm-hmm. and then by the afternoon I'm like mm. so sometimes I keep working and sometimes I don't yes and I think that that's the difference if you feel inspired to keep working then I you know that's it's always okay. wonderful to work it doesn't feel like work when you're but if for instance you're like oh I just don't feel like it you can, you have that space and time to go and do something else or 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 read or listen to uh, an audiobook or a podcast or, or or watch something or whatever it is yeah. that's a much more balanced way to approach um the day And speaking of the day, before we completely run out of time, I actually want you to tell the audience about your seven steps to amplify your online style because it's your signature self-paced workshop. And indeed, we use or send people, Jane, this online presence steps because it's so good in helping people yeah, yeah, thank you. Online. Yeah, it's it's it is. It's a little workshop. One, everything I teach, I I make it really practical so that you can yes. implement it with ease. The whole seven steps, you could do all of them without spending yes money at all. Like it's it's Correct. easy. It's yeah. Yes. That everything I do is about 
yeah, just quite practical. Like we're all it's busy. Very practical. Yeah. 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 And and so that you can make a difference immediately. You yeah. know, this screen here, this this is our advertisement for those Absolutely. of us in business. And whether even if you're not in business, even if you work for someone else, mm. you're a walking ad. So we need to think about that and give ourselves the very best opportunity mm -hmm. you know I, I talked about I think before we jumped on there was a lady who I jumped on a call with and she was like this yes it, <laughs> yes 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 and I and she was in business for herself and wonderful and all the rest of it and I just thought well you're not really instilling in me, and she did ask me point blank for my opinion, but you're not really <laughs> instilling faith and confidence like you are a woman mm -hmm. in business who knows what you're doing. Yeah. Um, whether we like it or not, this, and so if we ha each had shops, say we, was, we, we were each in a strip shop, yeah. this, this is our visual merchandising. Absolutely. So we need to think about all this. It's all decisions. So th Let's give ourselves the very best opportunity. So that is what my your amplify your style yep. online workshop is. Yep. Excellent. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to the audience is the book, A Woman's Guide yes. to Business Domination. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? And by the yes. way, audience, the links for all these things that we're talking about will be attached to the show notes as well. Yeah, Jane, the book. So. I Yes, I, I wrote a chapter in a book last year called The Business Guide to Women's Domination and I called my, my chapter Showing Up as Your Authentic Self mm -hmm. because it's everything I believe in to really shine brightly from within. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's actually my oh, first okay. foray into being an author and I'm super proud to say it was an Amazon bestseller. So Absolutely. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of there's some beautiful uh, authors in there with me who I share the stage with, which I'm very grateful for that, you know, it's it's lovely. It's really lovely. So, yes, if that's of interest, um we will have the link to get the book um, where you see the notes for this show. Jane, in um in the final little while, I want to know two things. Yes. Um, I want to know what the vision of the future is for you and your business, number two, and where people can find you and connect with you. Beautiful. I'm going to do the reverse. So... <laughs> <laughs> people can find me I am almost everywhere but usually best place is LinkedIn yes. that's probably the, the best place to connect with me I'd love to connect and let me know that you have uh, found me through beautiful Tony that would be delightful uh, otherwise my website is finesseyourstyle.com have a look on there you can connect with me on there lots of stuff on that Jane's lovely site Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the next five years. So mm. oh, I am on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Pinterest, but LinkedIn is, is the best. Yes. Place it, it's a wonderful place for yeah. connection. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So the next five years. So I, I'm very excited about the next stage mm -hmm. of Finesse Your Style. So as you may have seen, I speak quite a lot, which is amazing, and I work globally, which is also I'm lucky to be working with beautiful women all over the world. Mm. Now that life is uh, opening up again, I look yes. forward to speaking both in person and virtually on a global front mm. and aligning myself with like-minded women. We tend to find each other in Absolutely. all parts of the world yeah, and continue to, because I've positioned myself, you know, like I understand body image and all often we're yes. fashion with self-worth and body image. I'm very aware of all that. However, I decided to make myself part of the solution. Mm. Hopefully you can hear through this interview of my approach is all it's about different. Yeah. 
So, so you're not going to put a woman in something just because it's a brand name because it's no use if a woman wears uh, Dior and it's uncomfortable and she doesn't feel good in it, yep. yeah? Correct. I'm a million percent correct. I, I couldn't agree with that more. It's not about that. It's mm. not about what label is on the outside. Sometimes it's a no-name brand. But yes, it's it's actually not about that at all from my perspective. It is about you making the most of who you really are. I, I often talk about congruence of who Tony is on the inside is on the inside, mirroring the external. What's the ex yes. Yeah. That is what I'm all about. And, and it's so a beautiful way for mm -hmm. a styling from a styling perfection, a styling mm -hmm. profession rather. It's a beautiful way to be styled and be looked after it by is. It's a very different leader. Way. Yeah. And I, I feel like part of my my role moving forward is to be speaking about that mm. on stage in, in a few different areas because when women feel better and more confident about themselves, we are the magic. So we then impact our families, our friends, our partners, our relationships, our work and our communities yeah. all because you feel better about yourself. So yeah. the impact is so far reaching and that that is part of the next steps and stage. Fantastic. Jane, I'm so glad that you do what you do. I'm so glad that we are connected. I'm really grateful that I got to spend this time with you today. It's been particularly special. Um, for everyone watching, that is the end of today's Everyday Business Show with the gorgeous Jane Vandermeer. Please reach out and connect with Jane. She is a divine human being. For women out there, if you've ever thought about um, being styled in a different way that really is quite that that is not quite it is authentic if you work with jane um she has that beautiful wealth of experience knowledge and wisdom that she can help you feel great in your own skin and i know that she does this so wonderful audience please thank jane vandermeer from finesse your style and we will be back next week with another episode of the everyday business show thank you jane Thank you for having me, Tony. It's been such a delight. You're such a beautiful, special soul. shows with business owners that puts them in front of a global audience and in behind those shows is a whole range of things from digital magazines to social media to blogging to email to lead generation just a whole range of things